Welcome to Tech Tips by Norfield. I'm Carl Lewis, Senior Service Technician here at Norfield. In this video, we're going to show you how to upgrade the routers on an older 250M strike router. The Black & Decker 3315 routers and the DeWalt 610s were discontinued in 2003. The current production item is the DeWalt DW616s. This is the contents of the upgrade kit to change the router motor on the strike router. This is for serial numbers SR2102 and below. If the serial number is 2103 or higher, the kit is virtually the same, but it does not contain the three slide rods. So we have the instructions, the slide rods to hold the template holder, the main hinge rod, hardware with the new cutter bit, the wrench and collets for the router, the new router, and the cord for the router. We'll start by removing the template from the template holder. And the template wedge. Use a 3 16 Allen wrench to remove the router motor. that unit will be discarded. We're going to use a 9 16 wrench and a 5 16 Allen wrench to remove the four bolts that hold the head assembly to the frame. Now we can take the head assembly over to the bench. There are four set screws that hold the template holder rods in. Two of them in the template holder and two of them in the base casting down here. So now we can loosen the set screws with a 532 wrench. Once you've loosened the set screws, you just need to back them off a turn or two. They don't have to be removed. This is the set screw that holds the hinge rod in. And there is a clamp collar here that we can loosen. Well, some of these old strike routers, these rods get in here pretty tight. Yay. So you don't want to use a steel hammer to hit directly on the slide rod. It will mushroom the end of the slide rod over, make it larger, and then it won't fit through the casting. So you should always use something smaller, like a bolt or a punch, when driving the rod out. the assembly is disassembled and we've removed the old shafts we can discard those I've cleaned up the bushings in both of the movable parts and we're ready to start assembling it again so we'll take the two larger rods for the template holder put them in the base plate They should end up flush with the bottom of the casting on both sides. 
approximately there. And we can tighten the set screws on those. And install the spacer on this rod here. The spacer goes all the way down against the base plate. Check our hinge casting to make sure that it Put operates the shaft in the router casting. That will need to go over this casting. To the upper hole. Collar in there. Install, reinstall the uh, bolt in the lower casting. A hinge casting to hold that pivot pin in. The new uh, pivot shaft is slightly longer and we're going to put this clamp collar with this bolt on the bottom of it. That's how far out it needs to come is to come through that. So the collar with the bolt in it, when it sets down here and it's all down against the bottom, that bolt will contact the flange on the back of the base casting to keep the router from coming back too far and the router, the router bit from hitting the base casting. So I'm going to turn the set collar a little bit so that the bolt ends up flat against the back casting. Before there was no spacer here and this casting was down lower and the casting itself would hit the back, would hit the flange. Now we use this bolt on the collar. Right, that the assembled. Flange. We can put the template holder back on the top on these two rods. Put the template holder back on and this collar here goes in between the pivot casting and the template holder. The pivot casting should move freely but not up and down. template holder then goes down against that and we will set the other side at approximately the same depth from the end of the rod. Then tighten the set screws. This is the eye bolt for the spring to connect to. I'm going to reinstall the eye bolt. Tighten the lock nut with a 3 8 end wrench. Connect the spring. And we're ready to put it back on the machine. Need to install the new bit into the new router. This is the DeWalt 616 router. Half inch diameter bit. Short shank. These are the 
router wrenches and the collets that come with it. We'll be using the half inch collet. Install the bit onto the shank. Sure, it's all the way down against the shoulder. So the shank will need to be pretty much all inside the collet with just the bit itself exposed. And that motor is ready to install. So I'll put the, the head back on the frame. Now we can install the router motor in the clamp casting. The cord passes to the router motor here. We're going to want to see that coming out this right rear corner. So the switch will be to the operator's right. So we're going to position the router so that it's not quite all the way down in the casting. It's got a little gap at the top of the casting right here. Now we can put the template and the template wedge back in. And begin adjusting. So we have the we plug the router in and the air and we're ready to start adjusting the machine. I've set the collar here so that it will come up and the router will almost hit the template holder but not quite. There's about an eighth of an inch of clearance in there. Now we need to set the follower height to cut the shallow part of the mortise. So we'll just loosen this bolt and adjust that until we get that correct. Sixteenths is what I'm using. And we'll make a test cut to see what that looks like. a little too deep. So I'm going to take the follower down a little to make it a little bit shallower. So we'll cut a test mortise. And of course you'll check the depth of the mortise to make sure that it's deep enough for your hardware. If the mortise is deeper at one side or the other, then we can loosen the set screw on the template holder and raise or lower this side of the template holder to correct that. If the mortise is not the direct correct distance into the jam, then we'll adjust the jam stops here and here to correct that. In order to set the end stops, you'll loosen the clamp rod here 
clamp bar here, slide the rod so that the disc on the end is indicating the lock height of the door. So in this case we're setting it for 44 inches. So when you adjust the rod, put the flat side of the disc on the dimension that you're going for. The door will have a 44 inch lock height. We're going to insert the jam, put the dado against the stop, cut a mortise. The mortise should be, the center of the mortise should be at 44 and 1 8 or 44 and whatever your head clearance is, generally an eighth of an inch. If that's not the case, then adjust the stop until you get your 44 and an eighth. That way the, when you change the height of the bar, it's a direct read and you don't have to calculate the offset for the head clearance.